Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. A uh, crazy day. We'll get to that uh, in a second. And if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, spending some time uh, with us, and hopefully I can provide um, a pretty good outlook of the day-to-day -day unbiased opinion of the market. So let's talk about the tape. Um Scoreboard says the market was down a lot today. And, you know, when I looked at it, you know, when I looked at the final numbers uh, towards the end of the day, yeah, it was pretty big, right? You have Dow down 400, uh, S&P down 55, the NASDAQ was down 200 points. Uh, if you traded today, though, it felt like the NASDAQ was up 200 points. Let me explain in, in a second. Um, I, I, I think a lot of people, especially passive investors, um, or even part-time traders. Again, they, they spend too much time looking at the indexes. Guys, always remember, the indexes are a guide. You know, they're not, you know, cemented in what is going to happen. Because again, if you told me two hours ago that the NASDAQ was down 200 points, I wouldn't believe you. Uh, if you traded today, and this is again, the difference between an active uh, participants in the market versus somebody who you know, trades part-time or just has a, a passive ownership of their portfolio, uh, you really saw how aggressive today was led by the semiconductors, right? And that was the most important part. Um, here's the bullish case, right? Here's the bullish case and the bearish case. The bullish case is we are still in this formation, okay? We're still in this formation above the 20-day moving average that we defended three times last week. The bearish side of it, again, maybe I don't even you know, use the word bearish, but the sell argument about this is, well, the market couldn't advance, right? It couldn't advance. And we gave back the 10 day moving average on the close that we regained on Friday. Again, this is why we try to prepare for the next day. We're not trying to prepare for the next week or next month. We're trying to prepare for the next day. So that's what the one part I didn't like. But if you traded today, you saw the semiconductors went out of their minds, uh, led by NVIDIA. We talked about NVIDIA. Uh, over the weekend, a uh, big, big move on NVIDIA today. But the one that really set everything going was SMCI of all things. So there was there was some news this morning that SMCI, um, I believe the CEO came out and said they're shipping over 100,000 AI GPUs per quarter. Your guess is as good as mine what the hell that means, but I guess that sounds like it's good. And out of nowhere, right? Out of nowhere, they started coming in for the 44 weeklies, the 46 weeklies, the 50 weeklies, the 60s for next month. And you're like, well, what the hell is going on? This is before anybody knew what actually was going on. And this pretty much, you know, set everything in motion, right? This was one of the biggest moves I remember. There was a pivot we had when the stock was already up 10%, right? I personally didn't take it. I was like, ah, oh, chasing SMCI up 10%. Congratulations for what you guys who did. But this damn thing went up another 10%. I mean, something is more to, to the headline that they came out with. Because if you look at the channel right now, it is very, very close, guys. Look how close this whole channel is. If you guys remember, this was the hit piece, right? This was the hit piece by Hindenburg. This was the DOJ uh, potential investigation of SMCI. But look how close this is to coming out of this whole channel and start filling in this gap. If this thing starts getting above today's channel tomorrow, man, this could, could see 50. This could see 52. That's the 50-day moving average. So this thing got really everything going. You had AMD going nuts, right? You had AMD at one point uh, going out of its mind. You had, um, what else? Yeah, Avago was very, very strong most of the day. Again, you had a nasty little reversal. And then as I was leaving, uh, as I was leaving for the day, around that 2.30 area, everything was good. And then Cash Kari started speaking. Of course, there's, there's obviously not enough uh, Fed governors who speak throughout the day because obviously they get paid by the word. So he obviously had to chime in and he took what, which was a really, really strong day, setting up a, potentially a very, very strong second day for tomorrow. 
and you look at you know you look at the five minute chart, right? Just just for effect, you look at the five minute chart and the market a, a hell of a reversal, right? Q's went from all the way to four eighty six where where I was uh, where I left, and then went all the way down to uh, four eighty one. So you know I I loved what I saw today from the individual groups. I thought the semis held up very very well. Um, I loved what I saw from the leaders because again. As much as you know, people talk about the biotechs and this and that and the third. It's really the semiconductors who lead. Let's I mean, let's completely be honest. Nvidia today had a ridiculous move, an absolute ridiculous move. Uh, we talked about it today in the webinar. I thought the stock was going to hit that 30, 30, 30s area. That's literally the high of the day. I'm gonna get. I didn't guess where the price was going to be, uh, where potential was. Well, it shows you right. If you look at E signal, there was a linear regression. Line, I told you. Uh, it basically told you where the supply was coming in. So 130.30s w- was the high. But it's the amount of aggressive buyers that came in. As much as they were coming in very aggressively for SMCI uh, weekly calls, they were coming in just as aggressively as NVIDIA. The 130s, the 131s, 32, 33, 34, 35, all weeklies, they were coming for uh, January, February, uh, 150s, 160s. So the amount of uh, the amount of uh, aggressive buying in short term expiration on Nvidia today was super duper impressive. And let's see how it kind of plays out uh, in the next couple of days. Tesla. Let's talk about Tesla for a second. So, if you watch the weekend video, right? We watch the weekend video. Uh, everybody knows there's a robo taxi event coming on on October the 10th. That's three days from now. Okay. Uh, I personally thought, I personally thought uh, there was a chance they were going to run up the stock. We also talked about how the stock needs to reclaim that 5, 10 day moving average on on the weekend video. That didn't happen, right? That didn't happen today. Um, And we'll get to the pivots in a second. We did have, uh, we did have a really nice bounce off the 20 day moving average that nearly went up about two and a half points. But Tesla started getting very, very heavy. We started seeing some puts coming in. Uh, and Tesla barely hang- is hanging on the 20-day moving average. So here's my thought process. And again, I'm just talking out loud, right? Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Here we are thinking that, you know, they might run up Tesla into uh, the robo-taxi event. And again, like I said on the weekend video, we don't know if that robo-taxi event was going to be sold or is going to be bought. You know, gun to my head, pretty much every event is sold. But the one thing is, well, what happens if it doesn't? Right? What happens? It does. What happens if we don't get on uh, that run up? And that's why this is what we talk about all the time. Uh, this is why we trade both sides of the market. That's a very, very important part of kind of uh, what we do here. And the most important part is when you are a trader is again, don't fall in love with the stock, fall in love with the range. So we can go. We know a couple of things going into tomorrow on on uh, Tesla. Right, it got rejected twice off the five day. It got rejected the third time today off the five day, causing a lower high and a lower low in the last two days. We also closed below the twenty day moving average. And if you believe in the theory, and that's the whole point of the PS sixty theory, that stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand. Well, if it loses the twenty day moving average tomorrow, I will be a seller. I will be a seller of the stock again. We don't know if it will, but I have to prepare for it. So if they, if I look at it like this: if they can't run up the stock tomorrow. Uh, in, in the first two hours of the day, and we start confirming today's ranges, I will be a seller of the stock. And let's see if we can get a move to last week's lows and potentially uh, a soft landing into this 36 level. So I'm definitely, definitely watching Tesla tomorrow uh, for any potential weakness confirmation below uh, today's lows. Amazon this morning gets downgraded, right? Gets downgraded to this morning. Now, why is this important? Well, Amazon had a pretty a pretty negative reaction. Uh, Amazon is barely holding on uh, to the bottom channel here. I want to keep an eye on it for tomorrow for a potential trade. Let's see if there is a day two uh, in Amazon for tomorrow, right? If it loses today's channel, maybe it goes back down to the 50-day moving average, which which could be a, a nice measured potential move. Yeah, again, we have to definitely keep keep an eye on that as well. Um, this is, let me see what else I want to talk about here. Uh, Amazon, let me see what else I want to talk about here because there's a few things I'm definitely watching for tomorrow um, that I kind of haven't made up my mind on a few things. Um, let me just look at my notes here. Um, look at look at PayPal for tomorrow. Again, in case the market is strong, right? In case the market is strong. Uh, PayPal had a beautiful breakout 
on September the 5th. Uh, nice move, kind of going sideways here. Keep an eye out on PayPal tomorrow uh, for potential uh, squeeze above uh, the recent highs. Uh, SMCI, again, like I said, let's definitely watch this thing for another day in case it gets above this uh, DOJ headline uh, channel. Maybe you can squeeze. Um, look at Apple. Apple, again, has not been, you know, just has not been good, right? It has not been good. Every single time it kind of wakes up. And again, for the untrained eye, it would say, well, the stock's not really doing anything for the last couple of months. So you're, you're probably right. But here's the key here. It, well, it, it closed below the 50-day moving average, right? And again, I'm not saying this thing's going to be a one-day wash of two, three, five, ten 10 points. But again, a close below the 50-day moving average can't be good, right? It can't be good. For all you guys have been watching uh, the broadcast or in the webinar or just following me on social media for years, you kind of know uh, what happens uh, if a stock loses the 50-day moving average. So we definitely have some pretty good value tomorrow. I I'm definitely watching Tesla to see if it confirms today's channels to the downside. I'm definitely watching SMCI if it confirms uh, the DOJ uh, probe headline uh, to the upside. I'm definitely watching Microsoft. You guys remember Microsoft? We've been talking about Microsoft all the way down, right, guys? All the way down. It's broken every level now, guys. This is shows that there's, you know, one again, here's a point of what we talked about Apple a second ago. Once Apple got below the 50 or once Microsoft got below the 50, again, here's the result. So Apple would definitely watching tomorrow. So Microsoft has a lot of weakness as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see. And this is why we always uh, are prepared on both sides of the market. We don't put, kind of paint ourselves into a corner. And the most important part is we let everything play out organically. So here are the pivots uh, for today. Again, I was looking for that run-up, right? I was looking for that run-up, potential run-up day on, on Tesla. Uh, if it gets, it needs to get back above this uh, 251.16, 251.79, it never got there. And that was our first clue that, hey, something is wrong. Uh, Meta 597 needs to build. You guys remember on the weekend update, we talked about a potential push uh, to 600. Uh, it went to 602 very, very quickly before it pulled back. Uh, this was the big one of the day. Congratulations for all you guys who caught it. Uh, NVIDIA 125.30 is 60 minutes supply. Uh, second entry will come after the first pullback. It never pulled back, man. This thing, all, all it did was put up a $5 move. Phenomenal move on uh, NVIDIA. Uh, Microsoft, again, 414. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, Microsoft went all the way to uh, 409. Big move there. And here's where, you know, here's where Tesla started getting... Uh, creative here. So here's kind of where Tesla faked me out a little bit. So I shorted, I, I got short below this uh, 244.50 level, 244 in the teens. There was a reload buyer in the crowd. They just couldn't get rid of it. So I got rid of my stock, you know, break even. I mean, <laughs> we made a couple of pennies. Uh, I got rid of my stock. They, they spiked it up about a dollar and then they got rid of the reload buyer and they got the stock to 243. Here's the here's the wild part about trading. This is where again we talk about don't fall in love with the stock, fall in love with the channels. So I missed the trade, right? I you know I played. I think I'm still playing smart. I just didn't, you know, I wasn't going to let the stock squeeze me back if there was a reload buyer at the bottom of the channel. So I got long on that washout into the 242.60s, and the stock went all the way up to back to like 245 and change. So ironically, I had a better long. Uh, that I did short, but Tesla then loses the 20-day moving average uh, in the afternoon and puts in the lowest close in the whole formation. Again, this is what we talk about, guys. Fall in love with the charts, not the stock. Um, and I believe that is, oh no, this is it. This is the move, right? SMCI, weekly 46, uh, 10, 18, 50 calls coming in and the stock went out of its mind. Went from uh, here, 44 and a quarter last week's highs, needs to build. It went from 44 and a quarter to 48 and a half. Um, phenomenal move. Absolutely phenomenal move. So congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught that as well. So again, just another manic Monday for all you guys who are under 30. I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Unfollow me right now. Before you old farts, you know exactly what I mean. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Let's go Yankees. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody.